Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So first off, I want to say I apologize. I wanted to do some more video updates to Grimdon, but I've got a short little one minute story to tell you guys why I haven't so. Um, so recently my account got wiped in Grimdon. I've got like 550 hours on it. Not sure what happened. I don't know exactly why or what. This has happened to me on other Steam games before. So nonetheless, I tried resyncing my uh, cloud sync settings or whatever it's called. Didn't work. All of it's gone. Nonetheless, I accepted it, pushed on past. Here's my character. So, I was originally playing the, uh, forgot the character I was playing before, but it was the Soldier slash Oathbreaker. The reason why I stopped playing it is I really like playing spellcasters. It's like a bit difficult for me to try to scale physical characters in Grimdon because I'm just used to playing casters. There's literally no other reason. That's, that's it. People ask me all the time. It's just a lot simpler for me to play a caster. If I had a bunch of gear preset, then I would be more happy to play the other character. But anyway, I just really wanted to check out this character. So the character I'm playing now is uh, kind of like a remake of the old character that I originally played, which was the Vitality Conjurer. Conjurer is a occultist shaman. Because I didn't want to play the exact same build, I tried out now Shaman Necromancer. Now I'm a little upset because I think I kind of want to try Occultist Necromancer instead, but since the new expansion, I haven't gotten to do any of this content yet, but since the new expansion, basically once you've cleared the base game and you have done like all the normal content, you can get a potion for a future character that can just boost it right into ultimate with all waypoints unlocked. So if I choose to remake my character after a few days, I can just take my gear, put it into the gear transfer, you know, stash tab, take a potion, put the potion on my next character, you know, boost my character up, now he's an ultimate. All I have to do is level up to 100, which won't take more than a few hours, and get all my devotions, and then just farm some reputation. Which is honestly like not that big of a setback, considering all of my gear and recipes and things like that will be saved. So, the basics of this character uh, is essentially you go Shaman. Uh, you start with Shaman, and you go Devouring Swarm. You're going to do like 5-10 points in Devouring Swarm to level. You're going to burst all the way until you can get Storm Totem. Once you get Storm Totem, put about 10 points in Storm Totem and then immediately grab Corrupted Storm. This is going to take your Lightning Damage and convert it to Vitality. This means you don't use Lightning Damage to scale, only Vitality, that's it. You can still use gear that gives plus the Storm Totem because it's basically like scaling the Vitality Damage on the Storm Totem, but remember you don't want Lightning Damage. And then the only other things I really took in Shaman at the moment is Heart of the Wild. Um, and maybe I'll go like more into Mog Drogon's Pact, but not really. Once you start getting later on gear with plus two all skills, that's when you're going to start enabling one pointers like one point into Oak Skin because it'll be like plus five or plus six, uh, one point into Wendigo Totem, one point into Blood Pact. Um, the reason why I don't really have this now is I don't really stand still to tank things, so I don't really need Wendigo Totem. If you do, then feel free to get it. But the, the reason why I'm kind of feeling of like going Occultist is. I feel like Ravenous Earth is so strong that I don't really need Storm Totem, and I would rather pick up the buffs in, Necrom in Occultist than Shaman. But anyway, nonetheless, I looked at the endgame set, and a lot of sets now, they have changed slash modified slash added new sets, where instead of it only affecting two classes, it affects three, which is really good, because it allows you to, like, not feel like your build is shit. Even if one may be a little bit better than the other for what you're trying to do, as long as you're playing the general source, like you're scaling vitality damage, you're going to be able to make use of most vitality sets. Um, and then in Necromancer, like I said, we're going to be going into Ravenous Earth. So at the moment, we've just got Spectral Binding. I've got Spectral Wrath for the extra minus vitality res debuff. Uh, Ravenous Earth is what we've got now. I'm not sure how Decay and Foul Eruption are going to work, but I'm pretty curious to check them out. The only reason why I haven't rushed an ultimate skill is I really feel like they're not that strong. If I was a cultist and I had possession, possession is basically Harbinger of Souls, but it also gives Chaos Res, and it also gives uh, Absorption, which is like the most broken stat in the game. I don't really think we need cast speed for anything. I don't think attack speed scales anything. Um, and other than that, it's an okay buff. It's mainly just for the vitality damage. I don't think the Vitality Decay does much. I've never really understood too much of the secondary damage over time stats in Grimdon because I mainly just build for initial hit. I know I do have some type of Vitality Decay, but it's not really what I'm trying to scale. It's just going to happen naturally. Um, but yeah, 
So for the devotions, and then I'm going to show you guys some combat. Basically, what I've got set for the devotions is I'm going to be getting Dying God, and our next big guy is Ratosh. So Ratosh and Dying God are our two big main guys. The main reason is Ratosh gives Will of Ratosh, which is minus Vitality Res. That's pretty much the main reason. Um, and then for Dying God, it gives a huge steroid, which is basically the total speed, which doesn't really help us because you want to be ideally movement speed capped. And remember, I don't think attack speed or cast speed helps us, but it gives a steroid to vitality damage uh, and crit damage, which is what I would like to try to scale our character with to push it into the real end game content. Now, Dying God does have the penalty of a ton of life regen per second. That's why on our devotions, and also as a shaman, we do get benefit of benefiting off of life regen with oak skin. If you are playing an occultist, you have blood of dreg, which is also a huge heal. Now, on the devotions real fast, what we're doing, um, basically you wanna go for Wendigo as one of your first guys, mainly because it gives you a proc chance, which is really strong and helps with really good sustain. If you have Wendigo's mark on damage over time, it actually can proc like it, it, it rolls the tick so it tick 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 proc tick 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 you don't need to keep spamming it'll happen naturally which is really nice um, and then you can see the basics of what we have I've got like eel I'm gonna be working on lizard I have jackal I just got gallows now um, one of the big ones as well as behemoth behemoth is huge for life regen because we've got flat life regen uh, just flat life along with percent health more life healing effects are broken because healing effect is also the um, healing effect is anything to do with healing including life leech which is really good um again a huge health regen buff and then giant's blood which is really good for sustain um yeah and that's pretty much what we've got like i said once i get lizard here lizard's gonna give us that four completion bonus that four completion bonus is going to allow us to get dying god and to get Behemoth, I simply got Hawk first, right? So one, two, three points in Hawk, plus a green that makes four. And then you go into Behemoth. Behemoth gives itself as a bonus three green, which means Behemoth plus one green is four. So Behemoth unlocks itself essentially, which is great. Anyway, let me just show you guys how the character plays. So we are on Elite. We pretty much just got here. Uh, essentially, you're just gonna be running through using your Devouring Swarm, dropping your totems, and using your Ravenous Earth. I'll do that after. I can't do that yet. Most things are pretty much gonna get chunked instantly. Like I said, I'm scaling to try to kill, like, like basically I wanna go crit since I, I don't think I've ever played this guy as a crit character. So I'm pretty curious to see how crit turns out. But it's, we're not really going to be able to go crit for a while, and I'm scared maybe we won't even get to go crit, but I don't really know. We'll see. What are those add-ons? Oh yeah, thank you for reminding me. I can actually do a quick plug for that. So the add-on that I'm using, you guys know me, I'm usually pretty fucking anal about third-party stuff that I that I use. So I'll explain to you first off why I'm using this. It is called Grim Internals. Grim Internals is basically a huge quality of life uh, to Grim Dawn itself. So some of the features it includes would be auto component pickup, meaning if there's a component on the floor and you walk by it, it will pick it up. You can see here, it's just auto sucking it into my inventory when I move. The pickup radius is pretty far as well, so you don't really ever leave components behind, which is very, very nice. You can also choose to add health bars. You can choose to add monster names. You can actually reconfigure pretty much anything in the text file itself. I haven't done any of that stuff. To give you guys a quick little show of how it looks, if you download the Grim Internals mod and you hit Control F5, it will bring up this configurator, and this is all you need to do. Super simple, all explained, done right there read it check it out done um but anyway some of the more other things that i have added on is basically it shows the permanent buffs and temporary buffs that is on um the reason the reason why i have it is because that way 
you know, people don't have to always ask me. They can just be like, oh, he's got that buff on. You can see it right there. So I think it's, it's very nice for the viewers as well, so you guys can kind of see. You don't need to install Grim Internals. It's super simple. Even the devs are supporting it. Well, don't you have to install it to get it to work, though? I mean, you can do it through, like, the Steam Workshop or whatever, but you have to, like, like how do you just use it if you don't install it? You mean just extract it? Yeah, I mean, you, you take the folder, you put it in your Grimdon folder, you extract it, and then you run it. I'm just used to saying install, sorry, I'm an old school boy. I don't use the right CPU terms. Wow! Do, 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 do. And then there's also some other interesting stuff in Necromancer that I haven't really played around with yet. There is like, I don't think I'm going to use Mark of Torment, even though it gives absorption. I feel like the duration is just not really worth it. I feel like it's not consistent enough. Um, I guess I can just keep going Ravenous Earth. I definitely feel like a Ravenous Earth is doing <laughs> way too much damage right now. Doesn't cast speed increase totem cast speed? I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to say because like when I played Grim Dawn years ago, they have changed a lot of mechanics and how things work. So it's difficult for me to keep up with the game. So I don't really know. I'm pretty sure back in the day, there there was no scaling the totems. I, I could be wrong. I don't remember that you could scale their speed in any type of way. But like I said, man, I just don't remember. I kind of wish they would make it more obvious and say like, you know, this skill scales off of whatever. Some guy was trying to tell me that your totems may even scale off attack speed because they may be tagged as an attack because there is no spell damage. So there's there's that too. So I, I don't know. It's just, it's just a bit really confusing and it's hard to tell, especially at low level, um, what is doing what. That's why it's a lot easier to min-max your character towards end game because the uniques add such impacts to your character, it's very easy to see by removing one piece what happens. Anyway though, like I said, I just wanted to give you guys a little update with what's going on. Hopefully this character will be in ultimate by the end of the day. That would be super cool. Um, and then I guess I can maybe talk to you guys about reputation vendors in the next video. Uh, assuming we get there because if I get to ultimate then one of the big hurdles on progressing through ultimate is actually getting your reputation up so that you can buy faction reputation gear and then using that reputation gear um, to carry you through ultimate until you get a couple of unique pieces and then from there you basically try to get the upgraded unique pieces start but anyway, like I said, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. Have a wonderful time. I hope you guys enjoy the expansion.